Hello! Hello and welcome to another Popcorn Junkies review. What are we reviewing today, Maddie? Velvet Buzzsaw. Yeah, first time we've reviewed actually a Netflix film that we haven't seen at the cinema. Like Roma was a Netflix original. We saw the trailer to this and we were yes. desperately, desperately excited. Oh my God, really wanted to see it. Yeah, it like ticks two of our big passions really. Art horror and, and horror. Yeah, there you go, you see. Art and, and Jake Gyllenhaal. And Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal yeah, Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal. But there are some other wonderful actors in it who are also our favourites. Not forgetting the alcoholic artist. John Malkovich. And I'm so pleased that Maddie, uh, her, you know, younger generations are enjoying the joy of John Malkovich. I mean, nobody else I know knows. Please. No, but his withering looks. He, he can just look at someone and make them just... It's how one of his eyes cross over a bit, so he's always like, looks really yeah, perplexed. Yeah, 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 he looks perplexed, absolutely. So this is... Tony Collette as well. Tony Collette from Hereditary, starring Zor Ashton. Now, I have to be... Is that the one from Wonderlust? Zor Ashton is the woman from the BBC series Wanderlust, in which she was also with Tony Collette. Now, we hated Wanderlust, me and your mum, but she was actually very good in it. And it's also got Billy Magnuson, who has a very small part in it, but he was the sort of male bimbo in uh, yeah. Game Night, who was great. Now, it's set in the art world. I thought it was in the art world of Los Angeles, but we start in Miami, don't we? But then yes. it becomes set in the art yes. world of Los Angeles. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal is a, a, an art critic. critic. It was a really unusual part for him, wasn't it? What did you think? As it was. As... I've never really seen him do anything like that before. No, but he, he all... did it really well. He did do it really well. I mean, I, I filmed a lot in the art world, and there are an awful lot of people in the art world with really rectangular glasses. Stylish that, glasses. Yeah, that look like they have no glass in them. And they all stand around scratching their chins. And I'm, I'm a huge art fan. This, I thought, did a very clever job of sending up the art world. I mean, it was a, it's a satire. Yeah. And it's a horror. Mm. In that sense, as soon as you combine satire and comedy with horror, the horror necessarily is always a bit ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it, did you find it too weird, the whole thing about the art world? Did you, did you get no, all I, that? No, I thought it was really good because it's the first time something like that's been done. Yeah. So considering it's the first time something like that's been done, it was, it was good. Because yeah. Because it's quite a dangerous thing to do because um, although me and Kiki like art and everything, I'm, I'm not saying all teenagers no. don't. But majority of people my age yeah. wouldn't be interested on that kind of subject matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Netflix is very for people my age. That's true. So it's quite so bold. So we're doing something quite, yeah, quite yeah. Uh, risky. Well, it's directed by the same guy who did Nightcrawler, which we're a huge fan of. If you haven't yeah. seen Nightcrawler, it's a film in which Jake Gyllenhaal plays a sort of um, an amateur news gatherer who goes to extraordinary lengths to capture the to footage. All, yeah. yeah, and it's got Riz Ahmed in it. It's also got Rennie Russo in it. Um, and it's the same director. So I was really excited going into this. Now, I liked it a lot, but I was struggling a little bit at the beginning because I don't know whether it's the net, what I would call the Netflix effect, but there was <laughs> almost a quality to the way it was shot that made it feel not as cinematic maybe, yeah. As I was hoping it would be. Because I thought Nightcrawler was very cinematic. Yeah, yeah. It was all That's shot. why I'm very surprised that they're the same director. It's yeah, same director. oh, you did feel that. Yeah. yeah. Well, bits of it were quite naff. Suffice it to say, the horror comes in the form of an old artist dies. This is a spoiler review. Yeah. Uh, dies. Well, he's an unknown artist. Well, he's an so unknown artist, that's that. right. But so, he's, yeah. And he's left instructions for all of his artworks to be destroyed. He destroyed. But Zor Ashton, who's a very sort of ambitious but low level art person, Mm. is wanted to make a name for herself. She kind of yeah. lives in the same block of flats, goes in and basically nicks all of his artwork. Yeah. Now, I thought that whole premise was a little bit ridiculous, but you kind of went with it. Yeah. In yeah, you've got to let go of yourself in the film. You if do, you, don't you? If you watch it, like, that would just not happen or something oh, like that. Well you give just, up. You just don't. Just watch it with just accepting everything you're going Yeah, to see it's very it. true. It's a very good tip, actually. And, and so, consequently, whenever you have the idea of art turning into art, there's been lots of examples in old films, very old films, where you'll have artworks in sort of haunted houses where the eyes will follow you across the yeah. room. And they used some of, that sort, some of those sort of devices, didn't they, where, you know, well, literally, eyes and paintings were moving mm. and stuff like that. I thought, when it was really subtle, I thought it worked really well. When it moved too much, it really bothered that me. That was my problem with it. Because there was that really good shot where she walked past a, that portrait. Yeah. And its eyes were looking like to the side of something. Yeah. And then we didn't see it move. We were looking at her and then went back to the painting and its eyes had moved to look at her. So we didn't actually see the painting whilst it was moving. And I found that creepier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, like, as the film carried on, the paintings were moving just a bit too much. Yeah, I thought they lost the courage of being more subtle. I think they needed yeah. to drip, I mean, no pun intended, they needed to drip it out. Yeah, because even within the trailer, I thought that that bit was a bit... Yeah. Yeah, I have to confess. Yeah, out. yeah. I have to confess. I found myself in the film always wanting um, Jake Gyllenhaal back on screen. 
I mean, he had a sort mm. of fiery energy about yeah. him. He played, I mean, he's bisexual in it. Uh, he was really good. Did you ever notice when he was like, having conversations with people, you could see that he wasn't really interested in the conversation. So good. He was always thinking about something yeah. not to do with the conversation. So when he's talking to yeah, and he had that absolutely passive-aggressive blank expression yeah. that the art people, a lot of people in the art world do have when they, you're talking to them and they're like, I couldn't give a flying interest yeah. in you at all because yeah. you're not the artist. Yeah. What we all, had, all the act actors worked really well together. I thought all the act the, the cast and, in this were great. Yeah, and they were really good at setting up all of the characters. Yes. And um, kind of putting them all together. And like the very first part of the movie, you know, where they're at that exhibition. Yeah. And they're just showing you all the different things going on between all the different yeah, characters yeah, yeah, yeah. and you really got like a sense of the character and everything. I liked all of the characters. Yeah, there were some good scenes like that where the camera would move seamlessly through sort of private views and yeah. what have you and you would get a, a little flavour of different characters yeah, as you went. You're right, they were quite well orchestrated yeah. and were quite well choreographed. So the film sort of proceeds through basically, so this artist's work is is finally finds itself being sold throughout the LA art world. Mm. Um, but they've like limited the amount because he, he's done like loads and loads of yeah, that's right, paintings. Yeah. But they, um, it's more valuable if he's got less, so there's only like, Absolutely. they only show like five or something. Absolutely, and so consequently, what starts to happen is that the artworks or the dead artists starts to sort of take his revenge on them by killing them all via the artworks themselves, or not necessarily his artworks, but any art that ha happens to have been yeah, made. Yeah, it, it started off with just his, his artwork, yeah. and then it started to become any form of art yeah. whatsoever. Because there were like little moments like the moment where you saw the nose bleed from one of the... Th I thought the more subtle moments were really clever and I, th oh, yeah, I yeah. thought, you know, they could have had a bit more fun with that. Yeah, definitely. Like when they discovered that he was painting with blood, I thought they were perhaps going to find more body bits in the paintings yeah. and stuff like that. I thought, yeah, it was definitely a lot better when it was more subtle. I'm going to be really... And then I always had a problem with when, um, saw, when she finds um, all of the paintings in his apartment. Um, there's all these beautiful ones hanging up and everything and then in his fireplace you've seen where he's started to burn some of yeah. them. So you knew he was trying to damage them by burning them. And throughout the film, every now and again you would see them burning themselves. Yes. So they would get these cracks in them and then fire would come and it looked really bad. Yeah, felt. there were a lot of moments which felt like they were sort of cheap Netflix within a really... Su so there was a really superior cast mm -hmm. acting their tits off. Yeah essentially being killed one by one by artworks in, in very, you know, towards the end, really inventive ways. Yeah, I mean, no, there, you know, the Zora Ashton's death is technicolour, literally technicolour death. Oh, yeah. But also the death that happens to uh, the character who puts their hand into the ball, oh, the Tony spear. Collette, yeah. I thought that was a brilliant, I thought, you know, some brilliant touches. I thought they missed a trick because there's a point where the character, Tony Collette, is dead. Mm. And they talk about how people came in and thought she was part of the artwork. Yeah. And I thought in a sense, that sort of reminded us of how ridiculous the art world is and, yeah. and was. Um, and I thought they could have had more fun with that. Now, yeah. what about the robotic creature? Oh, he was horrible. That was your creepiest of all. Yeah, I found him horrible. Because me and my friend Evie share the same fear of things that move that shouldn't. Oh, right. Scare us. Okay. And he well, should so be like moving. a can? So if that's not moving by itself, that would freak me out. Oh, right, okay. He shouldn't be moving and talking like that. Not with those eyes. And those eyes were horrible. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was just, he was disgusting. And like, it's almost like at the beginning, you can tell that like, when Jake Gyllenhaal meets it for the first time and he's like really getting up close yeah, to it, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's awful. Yeah. I know, I was like thinking, I was like, that robot's so gonna get revenge later on That's in the right. film with you. Um, but it was horrible. But it, I also felt like there was a completely different film that John Malkovich was in. It felt like he was in his own film. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. was a short film about a really sort of moody, recovering alcoholic, struggling with not drinking, wishing he'd never given up drink. Yeah, I wanted more of him. I wanted so much more of him. Right down to the end shot is a really, pr oh, yeah. elongated shot of him being just, ridiculous just, on a just, beach. Yeah, yeah. And that was joyful in a way, it wasn't was, it? Yeah, it was, I really liked it. Really I really liked, liked that. that they ended it like that. It I really did cute. too. Maybe his purpose in the film was though, he was the only one who came out unscathed. Yeah. Wasn't he? He's the only one who escaped with his life. And yeah. perhaps that's because he was an artist and perhaps that was because actually, he decided he was so sort of hostile to the the faceness of the true world. To all. Yeah. David Dix, he was like playing quite a, he's like a proper artist yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, the way yeah. he's interested in everything. Oh yeah, he, he survived. He was quite calm, and he survived as well. So yeah. I didn't really notice that, but after you said that, I think yeah, they were, the art was killing off um, characters that weren't true. 
art lovers. Well, you know how the, one of the when you study sort of horror films, if you look at the motifs in horror films, you you know you often get the situation of films like Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth, where you'll have a bunch of teenagers. They're often smoking pot. They often have sex, and it's the characters who've done morally dubious sinful things, things yeah. sinful things, that are the deserved ones to die. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that innocent ones won't die, but mm. they're usually the first ones to die. And what I quite liked about this film was the way it subverted that that idea yeah. and basically replaced all of the pot-smoking, sex-having, naughty young teenagers with really cynical, horrible, opinionated, mean. arrogant, mean art world people. Yeah. Which, which is great, because it means the next time I walk into one of those art galleries, I'm going to sort of assume that they're going to be hung in the oh. cellar by someone. <laughs> but... Um, but so I quite like that. And so in a sense, the innocents, the ones that would escape and the ones that could escape were the, the pure ones who were the actual artists who weren't in it. For yeah. The, well, I mean, I suppose they were in it for the money. And the but... same with the girl from Stranger Things. Oh, and the girl from Stranger Things as well. So yeah. yeah. And it's we... funny. It is funny. It is funny. And it's just really, I thought for me, the greatest fun was had watching just Jake Gyllenhaal. Have... I felt like he was having a laugh. I yeah. felt like he was really having fun with the part. Yeah, he was really I thought he, he probably, probably really took a cut in his pay and he just thought, oh yeah, I just want to wear ridiculous yeah. glasses and point yeah. ridiculous art. But like I said, I thought, I thought it was a really good go at the first thing like yeah, that. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. It's a bit with Bandersnatch. Everyone was complaining, it's not that great sort of thing. Right. It's, like, it's the first time they've done something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good so point. So it's brilliant. So you can see like after this yeah, yeah, that yeah. things are going to get And better. you're absolutely right. Very bold and brave in this climate to do anything set in any yeah. way in the art. So I think that when, when the bits we didn't like about it yeah. were probably them trying to please the audience ah. that isn't interested in, in the art and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, in summary, give us your summary and give us your score. Ah, although the trailer was really good, I could also kind of tell that I wasn't going to really like how much the paintings moved. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that it was a bit... You saw that monkey one in it, didn't you, yeah. in the trailer? Yeah, that was an okay one. It, it was, was when the hand went like this in one of them, and I was just... Yes, yes. didn't know about that. And yeah. then I felt like I wanted more of certain characters, like John Malkovich. Mm. But I really liked what we got of him. Mm. Um, like when they're at the funeral for that snobby, <laughs> like, art guy, and then they're like, I don't know, what was he struggling with to do this to himself? And then John Malk Malkovich goes, I don't know, he was his normal shallow self when I was talking to him. Like, <laughs> and they were all just, like, so horrible at his funeral. <laughs> And it's like, yes. Jake Gyllenhaal's like, imagine dying and then going to have to spend the rest of eternity in a box that colour. Yeah, it's there were some like, great lines like that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I really yeah. like their bitterness towards each other. They were all really two-faced. <laughs> yes, yeah, they were, Really nice they? to each other and then they turn around and be like, oh my God, like, what the hell? Even Jake Gyllenhaal and Zora Ashton, when they had the thing going, yeah, they yeah, kind of yeah. hated each yeah, other. Yeah. It was yeah. odd. And I thought the deaths for all of them were really good as well. Yeah, I think the yeah. only one that didn't really, that was left a bit unexplained was Billy um, Magnus. Oh, Billy Magnusson's. Yeah, that was odd, wasn't it? But I'd probably give it 6.5. Okay. Because I enjoyed it. I didn't watch, I, after it finished, I wasn't like, mm, yeah. kind of regret spending the hour evening watching that. No. Because it was no. funny as well and it was entertaining. Yeah. If okay. you, just, you just need to let go of it when you watch it. Don't go watching this. I mean, I, I suppose I, I was slightly disappointed because I was going to it thinking we were going to have something as cinematic and as classy as Nightcrawler. Yeah. It's, it's fun, it's intelligent, it definitely takes a swipe at the art world. Which it's is well all, written. Which, which is all for, yeah, and there was some, as, as you're re-quoting some of the lines, I'm, I'm remembering great, there are some great cracking moments of wit. I did like the way in which all of the characters essentially loathed each other. Yeah. And, and even when they were in relationships or together, they didn't really look at each other, they didn't really like each yeah. other. So like that, even Tony Collette and Jake Gyllenhaal, you absolutely. know, like they had a close friendship. Yeah. But you could always tell like Jake Gyllenhaal's excitement for her was always fake and she was always like, when he walked up, it's like, kisses. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Absolutely, crazy. absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I, whilst we were watching it, I said, this feels almost like, it's a, it's a little bit like the devil wears Prada for the art world. The art world yeah. and, and I think that's quite a nice grab because Devil Wears Prada was quite a surface level film because it's about quite a surface level industry or yeah. world. And this too shows you that it's quite a surface level industry, the art world of, of LA. So yeah. I thought the I thought that some of the deaths were really inventive and I thought they were they had really Should good fun. Should we say some of the deaths? We haven't really said the deaths. Well, they, they, I mean, Tony Collette's arm is yanked off in the, well, in the like sphere. Like Sawn, sawn off, off by this strange, thing. but but her blood pumps everywhere, and she becomes part of what looks like an exhibit. Uh, one of the other ones is hung by by his fashionable scarf. <laughs> yeah, you said yeah yeah. Moral of the tale is um, don't go out don't with go a, out the fashionable scarf, scarf yeah. on. And then of course Zor Ashton, so which I, is I, in I the trailer. That was a really good. It was a great scene. death. She's, well, like, she's like in a private ex exhibition yeah, that nobody's yeah. in, and it's all like graffiti work. And then as she's walking uh, around, 
you see all the paintings behind her, like all the paints just like, m like melting off and going towards her and she's just completely unaware that it's traveling yes. up her yeah. and she can't like wipe off and then she like becomes the graffiti artist. Well, and I liked, it's interesting, I preferred almost the end result of her death than the actual yeah. process of her death, although it was arresting. Oh, really? I thought the end result was very clever, the idea that she was sort of, you know, trapped. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was that horrible one with the... Oh tattoo. my God. And then of course, Velvet Buzzsaw is a, is a reference to, is it a band or something? She was like in a girl band. She yeah, was in a girl something. band, the Rennie Russo character. Yeah, she's just sitting on the floor next to a cat and it goes round her and then you're reminded that she has a tattoo like here. Yes, so there is art the left. Of, of the, it's like a... Yeah, it's a buzzsaw, that's what buzzsaw, they call it, yeah. Uh, on her neck and you're like, oh, that's the art. And then you see it just start spinning. Uh, yeah. and, and it's the most like, horrendous ah! thing. And like, it must just, have just cut her neck off. And yeah, I could brilliant. have done with seeing a bit more of her head come off. I, yeah, I thought that, but then I quite like that they didn't show it. True. Because I had a real problem when we saw Tony Collette's no arm. Oh, right, did you? So like, it was really good when her arm was in there and she turned around and she went, oh! And, she had, like, and it just pumped blood it everywhere. It really stupid. It looked like one of the missing limbs you'd seen Jaws. <laughs> Well, anyway, yeah, so some really inventive, it's great to watch with your mates. I'd say this is a great one to watch with your mates. As long as you've, you bear in mind when we were sort of saying to other people, you need to, you need to be up for some wordplay because they, yeah, do, they do riff on the whole academic language of the art world. So they, they are taking the piss. And I could have actually done with a bit more of Jake Gyllenhaal talking into camera. Because like I thought critique when he, is just yeah, so the, emotionally draining. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he's doing all that. He's very, very good. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm not too far from you. I'd give it a six out of 10. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.